It's time for another Pinter Test challenge. Challenge, challenge. I wish I could have like an echo for emphasis on command. So I just sprung out of bed, out of my pajamas, with my bed hair. Look at it. It's luscious to film today's video. What we are going to be making today is jello drinking glasses. You can drink out of them. You can put little snacks like fruit uh, or other, I, I don't know what else would go with jello besides fruit, but you could put little snacks in them and then you can also drink the glass. <gasps> I found this pin on my own. I don't think anybody has ever requested me to do it, but I saw this on Pinterest and I also saw other YouTubers testing this out. The recipe is easy and I'm so excited to try it and see what we get. Ah. The ingredients are so cheap and simple to get. Really affordable if you wanted to try and do this for Christmas parties or upcoming New Year's Eve parties. All you're gonna need is a package of Jello. You can use any flavor you want. I made a ton of different colors. You just have to make sure that you have 170 grams of Jello. Just gotta say 170, somewhere on the box. I think a lot of these recipes came from Europe because everything is in liters and milliliters and grams and we don't measure stuff like that in America. I don't think, I don't know, I don't do a lot of cooking. You also need 50 grams of unflavored plain gelatin and you can get that right next to the jello in the grocery store they're in the exact same place the last thing that you're gonna need well the last ingrediency kind of thing that you're gonna need is 300 milliliters of boiling water it's got to be really hot so make sure if you are younger that you ask for an adult's help because i don't want anybody out there getting burned some other things that you're gonna need is two solo cups and I just got like the regular red solo cup for my outer cup and then on the inside I got a smaller little plasticky it, these are clear and they're thinner I found all of these supplies at Walmart so I believe that the outer cup like the regular solo cup is 18 ounces and then the little clear plastic cup is nine ounces the most important thing is that the inside cup is a lot smaller than the outside cup and you're also going to want to fill the inside cup the smaller one with water or rice to help weight it down because that's what you're gonna use to make like the inside of a cup you know what I'm saying we're gonna displace the jello with the smaller cup so it makes a cup you know what I mean what you're gonna do is you're going to take the jello and the unflavored gelatin and you're going to mix that together like I said I made about six of these so I think it's easier when you stir those two dry components together first and they're all kind of like mixed together I think that that just helps to make the water mixture when you actually make the gelatin a little bit smoother then the next thing you're gonna do is take that 300 milliliters of boiling water and pour it on top of your jello and gelatin mixture and just stir, 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 stir until there are no lumps or clumps or anything nasty. Then all you're gonna do is take the solo cup and pour your jello and gelatin mixture into that cup. Be sure and not fill the cup up all the way though because if you do, there's, there's too much. You've got to have space basically to put that inside cup in there because uh, once again it will like displace the liquid and then it will overflow. So I say fill up the red solo cup just slightly over halfway. Then what you're going to want to do is take a spoon and scrape off all of the air bubbles on the top. There will be like little air bubbles and stuff forming like foam and air bubbles and it's great if you just scrape all of those out of the way because if you don't it will make your jello cup look cloudy and bubbly on the top. It just won't look as good the finished product so it's better to just take a spoon and scrape all them bubbles. Then the next thing that you're gonna do is take your smaller cup full of water and put it into the larger cup and uh, then all you have to do is take like two uh, butter knives like two things that have weight to them and balance them on top of the cup 
and then you just pop this into the fridge and they say you need at least three hours but I always let mine set overnight just to make sure that they were totally set. The most important thing to do though in this process is to make sure that the inside cup isn't too close to any of the walls of the outside cup because then it will make your drinking cup too thin. I know that sounded so confusing but just make sure that the little smaller inner cup is as centered as possible in the outside cup. You know what I mean? Then after you've let it sit overnight, you take it out of the fridge, take off the two butter knives, dump out the water from the inside cup, throw that into the sink, and then you're going to very carefully start peeling that inside cup away from the jello. And usually these cups tear, which is really convenient to help them move out of the cup get them out of there, but it's inconvenient in the fact that they become really sharp. So once again, you've got to be semi careful because the plastic is sharp and you don't want to cut yourself. So just be careful when you're kind of crinkling it up and removing the inner cup. This next step helps if you have some kind of kitchen shears, but you can just use regular craft scissors as well. You're just going to slightly peel back with your fingers. You just kind of have to be careful in this process because you don't want to rip the cup. If if you do then you can't drink out of it. You just want to pull back the jello cup and then sneak a little pair of scissors in there and basically cut down the side of the solo cup and then tear it away. Then ta-da! You've got a jello drinking cup and they jiggle. It's fun. Ah. These are totally edible. We're about to try and eat one now because I'm not sure, even though obviously all the ingredients are safe because it's just jello and gelatin and water, I'm not sure how good it will taste because the gelatin might make them a little bit I mean, it definitely is a lot thicker and a lot tougher than actual jello. And if you just touch actual jello, it's still like a little bit sticky and you know, you can just like put your finger through it. But this obviously it's not sticky, which is great. I've even left some overnight to kind of test if they would become sticky once they've been kind of like just out in a regular air conditioned climate and they still are not sticky. So that's a good thing. If you want to make these for parties or something, you can definitely set them out. And once they're totally set, you don't have to worry about refrigerating them again, which is a good thing. I just think that maybe it would not taste as good, but I don't know. Maybe if it's a little kid, they won't care. We're about to taste the tasteability and let you know. I just love how they like still jiggle like jello. Look, honey, I made you a special blue and orange one. <laughs> But I didn't have patience, so now it's green. So you just mixed it together. <laughs> yeah, I think theoretically, though, you could do half and half if you only poured half of the mixture and then, like, had patience. <laughs> I also just recently filled that one with water. <laughs> Let's get that tearing action in camera. Look! <gasps> Even if you're super strong, they won't. They're... <laughs> so you're tearing it on the little baby weak side. You're not supposed to do that. Look, it's thinner there. You're not supposed to tear it at all. No. You mess around with it. <laughs> but look! Look if you apply pressure on the strong side. Look, oh, oh, I can't tear it. It's so strong. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> look at that! What does it taste like now? Tastes like jello. Weak jello. Yeah. Weak jello. It's kind of good. The cherry flavor has been contaminated. Cherry is my favorite kind of jello. I'm such a baby. I can't eat anything that doesn't taste exactly the way that I want it to. Wow, you're gonna eat the whole cup though. You clearly enjoy the weak jello flavor. <laughs> Wait, don't don't really eat the whole cup. That would be so hilarious. It's good. This is the importance of centering the cup because I did mess this one up. So this one, you could definitely put fruit in, you can definitely still eat it, but there is a giant gaping hole in it because I let one side of the cup tip. It didn't set straight, you know? So that is why you have got to be extra careful. Only one out of five didn't turn out. So I think that's pretty good statistics. Look, you can always just take a sip out of the orange one and then take a sip out of the blue one and then it's almost like blue and orange together. I like it. It looks like you've mostly eaten all of the red one. <laughs> Delicious. 
I am really impressed with this experiment. It pretty much looks exactly like the pin, which is something that rarely happens in my life. But I think it's kind of cool how you can actually see like the imprints and the details from the plastic cup. And you can see the little lines and ridges in it like the plastic cup. And it just looks really cool. Wait, you don't wanna say goodbye? Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Stay sassy. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for being here and for watching. If you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below. Subscribe. Become a member of the Swamp Family and give an alligator its wings. Also, if you want, you can like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash graveyardgirl. Or you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram the same way it's spelled here. Graveyard Girl. I didn't do that right. That's not normally how I do my outro. Fail. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!